Hi everyone and welcome to my leveling guide for season 28 without the challenge rift cash. I already made another video talking about the strategy with challenge rift cash and if you have no clue what I'm talking about there is this new altar of rights in season 28 where you have to sacrifice certain items and materials and part of that includes a challenge rift cash. So there will be people that will sacrifice it at step 15 in the altar unlocking and people that save it and don't wait three or four days until the second challenge with cash of the season unlocks. So if you're one of those people that don't want to wait and want to blast all the way through the first weekend, then here you go. I've done quite a lot of level practice runs with all the classes, so I have the strategy pretty much nailed down. Interestingly, this season leveling without a cash is actually way closer to leveling with cash compared to a regular season, because some parts of the seasonal theme actually help you to reach level 70 quickly despite not having a challenge with cash. And all that being said, you can actually still save the challenge with cash and profit a lot more from the seasonal theme by having crafted level 70 items from someone else or another account. So if you have a second account or you have a friend or there are also people that, uh, for example, find a partner from a different region, so NA and EU team up together, for example, uh, you can basically use another account's challenge with cash craft level 70 items and still level fairly quickly. So that's what a lot of people are doing. For example, on my Discord, there is a channel directly dedicated to that if you're interested. I also want to highlight that I have updated the entire 1 to 70 leveling guide with a season 28 section here in written format on max roll. So we have this entire like uh, block here that explains all the steps for both with and without challenge with cash. And I even added some uh, like basic class skills to use for all of the classes here as well in case you want to check those. Anyway, let's get into it. So when you start out of the season, the first character I create, no matter what, is going to be a necromancer because you have to do Act 2 bounties on Torment 1. If you don't have the necromancer, you should do it on a witch doctor. It's not a huge loss if you know your way around with witch doctor. You can do it slightly slower but than the necromancer. But you really want to do the necromancer if you can. So you start the game in adventure mode, torment one, and you're looking for Sultan Cool and Magda bounties. If you don't have that, you can just restart the game because you might have to do one of those two bosses. They are by far the easiest. So for example, here we got Belial, we just go again. I restarted the game once and here we have Magda, so this is totally fine. Now you go to the Templar and you collect his items. So you want to use his weapon and you want to salvage the shield and the scoundrel's weapon. Do not talk to the enchantress because you need to steal her weapon later. At level 11, she upgrades the weapon to a 38 DPS staff that you want to use. And that only happens if you don't speak to her. So throw away your weapon, uh, salvage those two, and now you go to act one. There's the altar of rights here behind the slaughtered calf in. So right now this is season 27. Um, there is no altar here, but it will be there in season 28, right here. And you unlock the doubled massacre bonus. This gives you double duration and double XP for massacres, which is part of the reason why leveling is so good, even without the challenge with cash. Now I need to explain why you want to start this game on Torment 1. So when you complete a bounty run from the bounty cash, you will get one death's breath if it's at least Torment 1, no matter what level you complete it on. So the idea here is that we do Act 2 because it has the easiest bosses and you always start with Magda or Sultan Cool. So you do that first because of level 1, those bosses are not really hard. You can go in there, blast them down and you're going to be like level 4 already or something like that. And then you go through those bounties, usually starting from the hardest to the easiest bounty because it gets harder and harder as you progress. But again, there is this breakpoint at level 11 where you get the staff from the Enchantress. So once you reach level 11, you TP back to town and talk to her and get the, we the weapon, which is going to be like some 300% DPS upgrade. And at that point, you do the hardest bounty. So just as an example, some of the harder bounties to complete are those clear the cave, you know, level 2 things. Some of the easier bounties are usually just those kill bounties, like here, kill Pazuzu, kill the Tone Keeper. This is kind of the easy stuff. And then you have, like, for example, the curse chests that are kind of in between. So in this case, for example, I would do Magda, and then I would probably do like the two kill bounties. Then I would probably be around level 11, and then I'd go to the Mysterious Cave, because I'm at my peak, basically, with the staff and the Enchantress, and then I'll go for the Cursed Outpost after that. So this will probably be like 
uh, the route in this run here. Now there is one really nice strategy that can help you out to make this run a bit easier. And how much of that you want to use depends on yeah, how comfortable you are with the necromancer here. So what I'm talking about is snapshotting. So when you enter an area for the first time, monsters around you will get snapshot to the current game difficulty and the current game level. So you see right now I'm level one and in the top right corner, the game level is level one. And this means that monsters that are spawned now will be snapshot to level one and they will not increase anymore. So what you can do is uh, what I'm doing here right now is I just run into that zone and this will already snapshot enemies that are like around my uh, position, so to say. And also like most of the quest monsters are also pre-spawned now compared to coming here later when I'm level 10 and then everything is going to be level 10. And those monsters will be way harder to defeat. Now they will give me more XP and potentially higher loot when they are higher level, but we mostly care about completing the bounty run and not so much about the XP that we're getting on the way. And depending on how comfortable you are and how hard the bounties are, you might want to do a bit more or less snapshotting. So usually what I do is I just like go into the area one time. For example, here I just TP to Desolate Sands and I don't run around the entire zone. But you can do that to make it easier on you. The more you run around, the more enemies will basically be preloaded and you will snapshot more of them at the lower level. But for example, just going here, even though this is far away, at least this, uh, these enemies around the area and around here will be snapshot to a low level. And then in between, you have whatever level you're going to be by the time you come back to this bounty. One problem here are those clear level 2 bounties. For example, the Mysterious Cave. Uh, this one, there's not really a point to do this. And you would have to go like quite far, you know, go to the cave, go to level 2, and then run through the level. So this can take quite a while. And the thing is that also on the way there, sometimes you have these little corridors, you might get stuck. You don't really want to kill enemies on the way. You literally just walk around. So that can take a while. But if you want to go the safe route, you can snapshot the entire game, so to say, at level one and easily complete all these bounties. Because if you're even like level five or level eight or something, you're going to destroy those level one monsters. So depending on how easy you want to make it for yourself, with those bounties, you can run around more or less. Usually I just TP to the waypoints and then I go directly to the boss. And that also works most of the time just fine. If you're starting with Magda, make sure to get a little bit of XP on your way there so you can kill some of these cultists here, for example. Uh, this will ensure that when you kill the first enemy or maybe the second ad that she has, and then the level up explosion will kill most of the other enemies in the fight. And you might even get a second level up and the fight is a breeze. When you fight Zoldan Cool, make sure that you kill one of the big guardians first and that level up explosion will deal a good damage to the boss already as well. And then you can just finish them and continue onwards with the other bounties. So the main reason why you want to do this bounty is because you want to upgrade your blacksmith. So in season 28, very soon after you start out, you'll be able to unlock items have no level requirement. And this is part of the reason why you do this bounty run. Because in order to get your blacksmith to level 12, you need something like 350k gold or so and one death breath. And you only get this one death breath without the challenge with cash if you do this one bounty act on Torment 1. So after you have completed this one bounty act, you open the cash, you get 160k gold and one death breath, and you'll be able to upgrade your blacksmith to at least rank 9 or rank 10. And at that point, you can already craft some pretty high level items, for example, a two-handed sword. So usually my level practice was done with this one, which is like the rank 10 uh, two-handed sword level 57 weapon, and that will have something like 800, 900 DPS. So you can see this here has a good bunch of int. You can even roll, for example, this 4% damage to vitality, and you have really nice stats. Uh, if you reach level 9, you just craft whatever is the highest weapon and go with that. It's not really such a huge difference. So you can see this here, instead of 900 DPS, you have like 700, but it doesn't really matter when you're blasting like level 1 monsters with your next character. And now after those bounties, you should be pretty close to level 18 already. But if you're not, make sure that you get to level 18. You can do this very easily in Temple of the Firstborn, where usually you level anyway with Massacre Chains. Just go there and do whatever is missing to get to level 18. Because here you need to farm two diamonds. So again, you restart the game here on normal difficulty until you get Salt and Cool or Magda. And you just go there and blast down those two bosses. And after usually one or two runs, you should have two normal diamonds. Those are important because they give you this unlock for items have no level requirement. You can also open other chests to get those diamonds. So for example, if you are really close to level 18 
and you see some of these like cursed chest bounties, for example, uh, you can maybe reduce the difficulty and just uh, two chests on one. And you also have your diamonds from those. So all those kind of resplendent chests work. They all drop a bunch of gems. And starting at 18, you can get those diamonds. So here, after a few attempts, I got sold and cool. Your setup should look like this. So you mostly care about corpse explosion and then casting the mages. They also give you more corpses. And for example, while leveling, you also try to keep the massacre streaks with your bone spikes. And everything else, just like a bit of like supporting damage. So we can go here and we uh, pop the golem to get a bunch of corpses. Wait for him to TP on us. And we blow him up like this. So it's very easy at level 18 on normal difficulty. The boss just dies. I click this thing and you see there's a bunch of these gems popping out. And as I mentioned, this might take like two, maybe three runs, but that's about the average. If you are confident that you're going to hit level 18 while doing those bounties, there is actually the strategy of just not opening this cache here after killing the boss at level 1, and you can come back at level 18 and then click it to get those gems. This actually scales up as you go. And at this point, when you have those two diamonds, you go to a jeweler and craft a flawless one. I'm just doing it with the amethyst now. You go back to the altar and unlock the no-level requirements. Then you throw all of your items that you have equipped on your necromancer, if you don't want to continue with this class, in your stash, because you can equip all of these items on your next character, your main class that you actually want to level. And at this point, if you're not maining a necromancer, you can just delete that character and you just make your next one. And then you equip all these items that you just put into the stash and you craft your high level two-handed weapon, for example, a bow or two-handed sword or whatever. And you can quite comfortably start something like at least Torment 4. So this is usually the way to go when you start out. It makes it kind of easy and uh, depends on if you have a lot of vitality on your gear. So if you are, for example, crafting a two-handed weapon and it doesn't roll vitality, uh, it might be a bit squishy, so maybe go Torment 3 in that case. But either way, something along those lines is fine. And then I recommend to do at least one uh, Act 1 bounty run again. But this time you do it on a high difficulty, you get more rewards, you get some mats, you have a decent chance of getting one an item, for example, the Ring of Warrior Granger. And it also guarantees that after this bounty run, you can upgrade your Blacksmith further to rank 12 and actually craft a level 70 weapon, which is significantly stronger. So you can see this here. This is an example. This is a level 60 weapon, 900 DPS, and here plus 500% DPS because of the extra strength and it has more than triple the damage. So after one bounty run, you can get this one and you already have two bounty acts completed for the season journey to get your heaviest gift. So this will already speed up the progression later down the line. Personally, I actually really like the bounty leveling. So I've done this a lot in my leveling test runs. So for example, after Act 1, I did Act 4 and then I did Act 5. And at that point, usually I was like already around like level 60 or so because I was constantly doing them on like Torment 4, Torment 5, Torment 3, something like that, whatever feels comfortable for you. And yeah, you have a decent chance for these items. You get a bunch of gold and you have to make sure that you save at least one bounty act turn in for level 70 though, because you need to get a jeweler plan for the season journey. So you get one of those jeweler plans guaranteed from a bounty cash turn in at level 70. And then you can get four more from buying this one design here, the Hellfire Ring, that gives you four different recipes for Hellfires. So you can see this here, this is the level 60 version and has decks in strength and vitality from this one design. And this actually counts as four recipes and this completes the season journey part where you collect those jeweler plants. The other option, a bit more simple, is to simply start blasting in Temple of the Firstborn. So here you use the power of the massacre bonuses, you go through the zone and yeah, you destroy everything basically. And with double duration, you don't really have to pay that much attention to those massacres. You just go through it, like quite reliably get like a few hundred massacres. And if the streak drops at some point and you're like quite far into the level, then, you know, just keep going in the next game and just adjust the difficulty as you go. But it should be quite easy to do for almost anyone, even if you're not that confident with massacre leveling in the past. So leveling will definitely be faster if you do Temple of the Firstborn only, but not by too much because with the double duration of massacre bonuses, while doing those bounties, you can actually get a significant amount of massacre bonuses as well. So for example, you have these curse chest events, or sometimes those kill bounties, you have to do like 150 enemies, you know, stuff like that. You can actually just like kill stuff on the way. And that works surprisingly well. 
on the live server that was actually quite difficult to test because yeah at low levels you're kind of slow and i drop the massacre often but this won't be such an issue when the season is actually live some things that will help you out as you go especially if you do the bounty strategy is that you get a lot of materials as you go and you can craft more level 70 items you can just equip anything you craft so as you go you can craft one of each of those level 70 pieces and just add more and more stuff to your character to get stronger and stronger as you go but obviously keep in mind that you are leveling up and monsters also get stronger but in general i was pretty comfortable staying at around torment 3 torment 4 all the way to at least level 60 and then sometimes i would have to reduce it a little bit depending on the class and the luck that i had one thing that's really neat is that everyone gets a sage set recipe for free so make sure you craft that early as well and you can just wear it and later on put it on your follower you can do this and then just go through this list of armor pieces here and craft like one of each as you go as you have enough materials and if you have a bit of leftover gold you can even go to miriam level her a little bit and also maybe roll an item once or twice to get another really good stat on my live server test runs where i didn't have those double massacre streaks i was still able to do 1 to 70 on all the classes in one and a half hours or faster so it is still not really a bad strategy it is definitely slower than opening the challenge with cash and having all these materials available and crafting like a full set of level 70 right from the start so this definitely speeds it up you're also missing out on those 15 bounty materials that you can use to potentially cube like uh, an item that you gambled or found on the way so sometimes that can help you out a bit as well and yeah opening a challenge of cash definitely ensures a more smooth start especially for casual players but as i mentioned the difference overall especially for more experienced players is actually rather small and we're talking about like less than an hour in fact i've already uploaded a lot of my leveling test runs mostly with the no cash strategy because that's what i'll be doing as well and what is also like the more interesting thing to test here in my opinion because we've done challenge with leveling for ages now it's just super crazy this time okay but overall, I think this is actually a lot more fun as well compared to the usual start. But that's obviously just my personal opinion. So if you want to see some of my practice runs, go check the playlist that I have linked. I also have uh, a lot of extra info down in the description. There's like a cheat sheet uh, with stuff to gamble, with uh, what items and what skills to use. So go check that out and the links to the leveling guide in written format. And this also concludes the guide. So to sum it up, you start the Necro, T1, Act 2, Bounty, Snapshot all the bounties, kill Sultan Kula Magda, get to level 18, get the diamonds for the no level requirement unlock, and then you upgrade your blacksmith as high as you can, craft a weapon, and then start blasting on like Torment 4 or so, until basically all the way to 60, and you just craft more and more level 70 items as you go. This is a very unusual leveling strategy where you have to switch a character and do bounties at the start and these kind of things, so I can definitely recommend you to at least try this Necromancer start for once. Uh, to get familiar with how it feels, with how the difficulty is, and how the snapshotting works, because yeah, that is something that a lot of people are probably not used to. Overall, this Necromancer start, on the live server at least, should take something like around 20 minutes. Uh, you can do it a bit faster on a good run, a bit slower on a bad run. Uh, in the Season 28 release, I guess something like 15 minutes or so is definitely quite doable, because you level faster with the extra massacre streaks. And then you go for like around an hour or so on your other character to reach level 70. So this is a really good benchmark. The good thing is if you do this bounty leveling strategy, maybe get an item or two and you can also immediately cube something that uh, you might find on the way or you might gamble like one of those really strong like starter items for example. And you have a big chunk of the season journey already complete. In my leveling test runs, I've done one with every class from zero, no cash, to at least GR70. And those were between three to around four hours, uh, depending on the class and the luck. So this is kind of like the time that you can expect if you are fast and efficient. In any case, that's it for the video. So I wish you good luck in season 28. Have a good start. Hope you liked this video here and I'll see you guys next time.